Hello, hello, welcome to Tuesday's Online Bible School. We're going to jump right into the Word. Father, we thank you for the Word. It's your Word is what we go by so we can live in victory in Jesus' name. We're, are the, the, we are the winner people, not winning. We are the winner. We're not winning. We are the winner before the game ever starts because the game of life started over 2,000 years ago when Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Isn't that good? So we're going to dive into the Word tonight. Just jump right in it. We're going to talk about the working of miracles. Did you know that you don't have to have any special gift to receive a miracle? That's what most people are doing. They travel around, some of them far distances, to places that know that sometimes a person operates in the working of miracles. So they'll travel far distances, but you can receive a miracle right there where you're at. Yep. I was, I was going over to a friend of mine's house uh, three days before it happened. I just woke up one day and I was praying and they had I had a clock hanging up on the wall and I was I just opened my eyes and I was just like uh, Lord what do you want me to do today he said I want you to pray for three days so it was nine o'clock I think when I got up got cleaned up and all that looked at the clock it was about nine o'clock eight o'clock nine o'clock something like that in the morning so I just started praying in the spirit and I just started thanking God for for miracles. They start thanking God for miracles. Uh, his, the first phrase was, you don't have to wait for the gift of miracles to operate for you to receive a miracle. So why is that? Because everything that God does is a miracle. You're a miracle. I'm a miracle. Salvation is a miracle. That's the biggest miracle that you will You've already received the biggest miracle of salvation. Jesus coming and living on the inside of you. God coming and living on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit coming and living on the inside of you. You've already received the biggest miracle. So if you've already received the biggest miracle, then what does the devil do? The devil comes in to try to tell you that you don't have nothing. <laughs> yeah. Or he don't let you know what you do have. See, what you do have is when you receive Jesus, Romans 10, 9, confess Jesus as Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. When? Right then, the second that you receive Jesus and call him your Lord. So that is so. So then you received the biggest miracle, the hardest miracle to get, you've already received it. It's the easiest thing in the world to receive. The devil's the one that makes people think that are outside the camp, still in the world, that it's hard to get saved, born again, but it's not. When he draws you, and he's drawing you right now, to receive him. Yeah. Now, what do you do? Well, what the devil do? Well, the devil sat there uh, back in Adam and Eve's day and just watched him a little bit, and he was thinking, hmm... I need to talk them into giving me the dominion over everything. How am I gonna how am I gonna talk them into giving the dominion and authority? The word dominion, authority, and power are simultaneous. He says, Well, how am I gonna do that? Well, the way that he did it was he told them that they didn't have something that they already had. He said, if you do what I want you to do, you're going to be happy. The devil said, well, if you do what I want you to do, uh, you're going to be like God. If you do what I want you to do, you know, you're going to have all the rule and reign over this whole garden and the earth. But they already had all those things. But see, he injected that into them, into their mind. That's the same thing he's doing to you right now. Is he's trying to tell you that 
Believe God is going to give you these things. That's why you pray. Lord, now sometime in the wild blue yonder in your timing, I know you're going to do this. That's it. That's what the devil told Adam and Eve back in the day. So what do you do? You already have all those things. You already are like God. You already have the authority and the dominion and the power. You already have dominion over the, everything. On the earth, under the earth, and above the earth. See? But religion teaches. See, religion is really of the devil. Because religion says, just believe that someday it's going to happen. One of these days, you're going to be like God. One of these days, you're going to have dominion and power. Just keep doing what I'm telling you to do, and you'll be happy. That's the exact same thing the devil told Adam and Eve. And they hooked, they bought it, hook, line, and sinker. And you see people today, even people that are born again, are still talking like that and still praying like that. Well, how are we supposed to do it? We're supposed to do it like Jesus. What did Jesus say? He spoke directly to it. What did he say? Healed, saved, set free, delivered. What are you talking? What are you talking to your circumstances of life? Are you just talking circumstances of life? That's devil talk. That's playing right into the devil's hands. See, the devil cannot do what he wants to do unless he uses your mouth, your God-given authority in your mouth. So what do you do? You have to do three things. Number one, you do pray to God. And then number two, you believe what? God's word. Do you just stop there? No, I said three things. And number three, you receive. You receive what? The finished work of Jesus. So if it's finished, then all we're doing, we can say, well, I have salvation in Jesus then. Well, I have divine healing in Jesus then. I have my miracle then. See? See, a lot of this stuff that the enemy uses, now he's saying, uh, he's been saying it for the last 2,000 something years to people. I hear people nowadays even say it. Well, I'm waiting on the manifestation. When the time you release your faith until the manifestation comes, God is the only one that knows the distance between there. Where is that at in the Bible? I have no clue. <laughs> no, because it's not in there. God says you have it now. Would you ever say that about salvation? When you opened up and you gave your, you confessed Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. When you get saved, right then. Somebody come over three days and knocked on the door and, and knocked on the door and you started hollering and screaming and hollering and screaming and hollering and screaming. They said, what's going on? Well, I prayed three days ago, but I just now got saved. No, you wouldn't say that. Why do you say it about everything else? Because there's a devil out there that's still speaking. It worked on Adam and Eve. Why shouldn't it work on you? The only way that it won't work is if you know what the Bible says. And the Bible doesn't say to believe that someday. You know, you, I've heard people do that. They call people on the phone or they call this. Well, I'm praying for you. I know someday you're going to get saved. No, they're going to die and go to hell. Because that's not faith. So what do you have to do? We repent for being stupid. And then you say, Lord Jesus, I'm going to say what you say. You said me and my whole household is saved. So I'm saying me and my whole house. So that means a family and friends are saved, born again. But they're not. They're acting like heathens. They're acting like devils. Well, so is the pain in your neck. <laughs> but what do you say? I believe someday he's going to heal me. No, because healing will never come. So what do you do? You speak present tense. I am the healed. Pain leave. I am the healed. Thank you, Jesus. See, what are you praising God for? What are you thanking God for? What are you worshiping God? See, when you speak the word of God, that's actually lifting your hands in surrender. So I surrender, God. I'm not going to do it my way. 
I'm not going to do it religious ways. I'm not going to do it denominational ways. I didn't learn this by the denominational places. I learned it through reading the Bible, studying, and first of all, praying before I study and pray. And the Lord just started showing me there's nowhere in the Bible that says to believe God for the future. Nowhere. So what do you do? The God's a God of the now. Now, is God Alpha and Omega, beginning and end? Yes, but we're to live in the middle. <laughs> and the middle is always now. So, well, I'm believing God's going to do it. So you're living in the future now. No, you don't live in the future. See how stupid that is? But people do it all the time. That's what Adam and Eve did. The devil said, well, it worked for Adam and Eve. How do you tell somebody they don't have? How do you tell somebody? How do you tempt somebody that has everything? Tell them they don't have everything. That's how you do it. That's what the devil did. So God said you have everything. Jesus said you have all things that pertain to life and godliness. You're not going to rewrite the Bible. So what do you do if you're having a struggle speaking faith? Well, you repent. Because you still got religion in you. See, however old you are, however long you've been born again, uh, before that, probably just had religious practices. So what do you do? Well, you have to repent for participating with religious practices. And even now, I mean, if you're hanging around some place that's not promoting faith in God, they're promoting religion, you know, Pray real hard. God's going to give it to you someday. That's religion. That's not faith. Faith's always spoken present tense. I have it now. Why? Because God said I have it now. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews 11.6. It's impossible to please God without religion. I want my young. No. Without faith. Faith is faith in God, not faith in yourself, not faith in anything else. Faith in God. What is faith? Faith is the evidence of things not seen. So if you can see it, wear it, drive it, you have it in your possession, it's not faith. But whatever it is that you whatever it is that you are wanting, you don't leave it in the wanting realm. You don't leave it in the need realm. You don't leave it in the desire realm. That's just a target to direct your faith. And then once you receive, how do you receive? When I have it in my hands. No, you don't receive. You receive with faith. You ask, believe, receive. You could be racking with pain, broke, busted, disgusted, but you're the one that has to say, you know what? I have. And you say whatever you have in God. What's God say? God says now salvation. God says now prosperity. God says, now I'm healed. See, what are you saying? I am the healed. I am the blessed. I am the healed. I am the set free. That's not just a cliche that I came up with. That is actually what the Bible teaches that salvation is. Healed, saved, set free, and delivered. So do you have a right now God? Then you're worshiping the God Almighty. <clears throat> do you have a used to be God? Then you're not worshiping God. i am got to be God. If you have a gotta be God, that's what the devil told him to, to do gonna be's. You're gonna be like God. You're gonna be prosperous. You're gonna have the, the rule and reign and dominion and power. So if you're like that, you're, you know, you're actually worshiping the devil. You may not realize that. But that's what the devil told Adam and Eve, that you're gonna be like God. But God said, I already created you. You already are like me. Well, I believe that I'm going to have dominion. I'm going to have power. I'm going to have authority. One of these days, I'm going to pray real hard. That's what the devil told Adam and Eve. Uh-oh. So you're realizing, you know what? I've been saying devil words. What's God's words? God's word says that you are healed now. You are saved now. You're filled with the Holy Spirit now as you yield to him and speak in tongues. You're financially blessed now, even if you don't even have two pennies to rub together, or even lint in your pocket. Why? You're just simply saying faith in God language. When you do that, God hears that language. He don't hear all the doubt, anxiety, worry language. You can pray to the cows, don't come home because they ain't coming. 
Well, I'm going to cry hard enough. Where's that at? <laughs> Where's that at? That's not in there. So what do you got to do? You got to repent and say, Lord, I'm turning to you with faith. And just start worshiping and praising God and singing to him. What are you doing? You're rejoicing. Why are you rejoicing about everything around you? Not looking good, looking bleak. Oh, I'm rejoicing and praising God because... I'm experiencing God in a new and a fresh way with faith. Have a great one. Have a great one. Have a great one. Have a good one. God bless.